Hey guys, Master Xeon here. Now in this tutorial we're going to be modeling this. Now I've already went through and worked on this just to perfect it before making it into a video. Um, this model is based off of one of my buddies, uh, Logan, um, who was so kind as to loan me his face for the making of this video. Now whenever it comes to reference images, there's a couple of ways to Alright, continuing. Now, human reference images are something that you can buy online anywhere from 10 to 30 bucks. However, I have found that it's easier to just ask your friends to let you just take photos of them in return for a flattering image. Now, just because you're using an image of a person doesn't mean that you have to actually make the person. In these pictures, we have our skin textures, various details that we can use to build any model and just pretty much paint it with the variances that you see in here that are exclusive to realistic skin that come from sunburn and uh, whatnot. So let's just take a look at this. So these are a couple of the works in progress and we're going to go over the process of completely making the head and then possibly making a body depending on how it all goes. So these are all just works in progress from the initial project. The initial UVs were just painted on and had my fun with it. But now it's time to make a video out of it. This one's probably one of my favorites even though he looks like he's been in a cooler for a long time. However, at the end, by the end of it, I had began messing with the SSS shader and after playing with the settings and going through various passes I ended up at the end with something that was doable except that the specular layer just makes him look like he's been slapped in the face with a bunch of Crisco not to mention the hairstyle isn't even the same but all in all we're gonna go for the gold and go for the model and here's the 3D model at the stage that I left it off on now all the reference images that will be used for this will be included with the blend file whenever I upload it on BlendSwap. However, it will be once we get a considerable amount of progress that I will be uploading it as a model to be downloaded. But whenever it comes to making heads, there is special attention you must pay in the eyes, the nose, and especially the mouth. Now right here there was some sort of merging of vertices that happened that run the lip line and since I already had a multi-res I didn't want to go through and modify it when you know with the wireframe turned off I had pretty much had the head I was looking for but we're gonna try to take it a level further and put skin pores and normal maps and all that stuff and we're gonna make it just from images so as usual we start with nothing so the first thing we want to do of course is save our file now on the desktop I actually made a folder for this. We're just going to call this L.blends and this is just where the blends are going to be. And I always put a number in the file name so that way I can just go in and increment it. So the first thing I'm going to do is click this to make a new layout. Get rid of this. We're not going to use that anytime soon. Um, this panel is useful, very useful. However, we're going to get rid of it for this layout and drag out a new window. Make this a UV image editor. So we have our two views, and we're going to name this view modeling because that's pretty much all we're going to do here. Camera, H to hide, delete the lamp, the lamp's useless and might as well turn on screen cap keys might as well save it because it tends to crash when I turn this on so go ahead and just turn that on and now down here I can change the font 60 icon group mouse and text T and N now this one is somewhat rehearsed, I practiced it before, however it has been a couple of weeks. Um, so start off selecting the cube, edit mode, subdivide, subdivide, two subdivisions, 
my favorite keyboard shortcut, um, Alt, Shift, and S. Press 1, turns it to a sphere. Easier than using a UV sphere, in my opinion. We'll just hit Set Smooth. Actually, we will not. And I want to put it above board. Now from here, we're going to go to our Reference Images directory and just select what images we're going to use here. We'll start off with that one and that one. And we can get around to these other ones as they come. I'm also going to go ahead and open up GIMP because there is a little bit of treatment that's going to be needed for these images. Yay, 2.8. It's always good to have the latest version. Now, I was hoping to actually record this entire thing in Ubuntu, but that did not work out. In fact, every time I open it now, it's saying that there's an error with the disk and can't load, so... Fuck that. So we're going to go over here, bring in this image into GIMP. Now, the main reason I use GIMP is because it's free. I don't have to crack it. I can install it quick. Same reason I use Blender instead of Maya or 3ds Max. It's free, so I don't have to crack it. It installs quick and has a pretty low footprint on the system. So those are the main reasons that I like Blender. But, you know, if you wanted any other program, you didn't want to buy it, just Google it, you know? So right here, I'm just using the lasso tool and we're just gonna make a nice little cutout of his head but we don't even need both sides for the initial so select invert delete add alpha channel delete again and we're just gonna put a white background actually delete this layer. Now we're going to add a white background. Just put it below. Control Shift A. So the ruler tools are rather useful. We're going to line up the eyes. We're also going to line up the middle of the face. And just come down here under the rotate tool. Make sure the right layer is selected. And this part requires a little bit of finesse. I probably should have done this before, but you know, sometimes it's good to see it done in advance or as it's being done. All right, it's gonna give me issues moving it, whatever. Press enter. So now we almost have his nose cut in half and his eyes even. And we'll come back and worry about the asymmetry and the details with that later. So we start off. What is happening here? To new layer. What is this? Delete. All right. Delete half. Control Shift A to unselect that. And now from here we can duplicate the layer under select or no layer transform flip horizontal and I think if you hold control if you hold shift no if you hold alt well one of them constrains it so it you know moves only on a specific axis which in 2D you know is only X and Y and that'll do. So we take our rulers out, just click it when it's red, just drag it away, and here we go. So take this layer, merge down, and we're going to go ahead and save this as desktop. What I name my folder? Sorry. Um, and this one, we'll just call this textures. We'll just call this one um, 
Nightmare 1, you know, No Imagination. Now the next thing here is, um, we're going to just draw a box around the head, like so. Image, crop to selection, save, and then export. And we're going to call this Logan Mirror One dot PNG. Export. Now, a lot of these pictures here you see probably wouldn't be useful for a whole lot, but it, is, it helps us with understanding the shapes and the curves as far as how the skin reacts with the skull, which is important because we need to get the jawline and all these fine details and swerves just to insinuate on a gray plain untextured model that this is indeed a man. So under textures we have Logan. We're going to just drop that in too. And now we have our mirror in Blender. Now in the viewport press control up arrow shift C. Actually I don't have to say what I'm pressing anymore do I? Now we jump back over to our main layout which is here and we choose for the empty that we want it to be an image Logan Mirror RX90 um, negative 0.5 maybe we'll go in local mode and just see what we got here now the only way we know that we got it right is the arrow that we see at a distance that shrinks as we zoom in I know, I wish there was a better way, doesn't even matter. So here we go. We now have our reference image in the viewport. Now I used to use over here background images, but in perspective mode you don't see your images anymore. And in orthographic view you only see your images if you're in a certain view mode. So we're going to bring the head up about here. and. Apologies if I go silent on you. I am also listening to music and I also talk for a living. So I'm not always wanting to explain things, but this is a tutorial, so I'll do my best. Turn on proportional editing. Oh, wait. Jump back over to the modeling layout. And we're going to just try to hack it together real quick. Just roll the wheel. Well, first turn on proportional editing. Now, try to get the shape real rough because we'll carve this thing up like nobody's business here in no time. There's no specific direction right now. We're just trying to fit the face in the box. Ears will come later. No need to worry about that. Um, but there are some advantages to using actual humans for your references that you take in real life instead of getting them from the internet. Internet pictures aren't always high quality, you know. So skin pores and all that stuff, forget about it. Now from here, this is probably my favorite part of the technique, I mean of my style of modeling, is we're going to shift A at another empty bring it out and jump back over to the default view again. This time we are going to tab, go into edit mode, you unwrap. We don't need this UV, it's useless. But we're going to make another one and we're going to call this project. Save the file. Blender tends to crash a lot. Um, even now with the B mesh. That's great. I mean, it's great that they put the B mesh, but it does crash a lot more. And you'll see why I like B mesh so much here in a moment. So, we got our UV set up. Let's go ahead. Now, a thing about loading images in the UV image editor is if I just have two verts selected and I bring up an image, nothing comes up. But if I have everything selected by, you know, double tapping A, then voila, what are we looking at here? is this. So here's our UV layout right now. Not good at all. But we are going to use the UV project 
and fire the face at this almost the entire time that we're modeling it. And this will give us quite a bit of control. Start off RX, rotate the empty, and this part is also going to be slightly hard, but nothing is ever easy, and that is scaling the image to fit. We'll scale in the projection to fit. So how do you correct something like that? Well, the easiest way to do it is probably bring out the grease pencil, you know, new layer, make it non-black, make it blue. Um, click on this one, and we're going to just call this lineup or something. So now I got my tablet here, and I found out that if you click enable sketching session over here you can actually press D or hit draw and just continue drawing instead of holding down the D button problem here is that everything is looking a little missized but no worries and we're just going to trace over just some important details that we want to use as possible landmarks doesn't even have to be perfect as you can see the pen is making me look like I have Down Syndrome, but we're just going to trace out just some small details here and there. He's also got this little ball right here in the nose, and now press escape to get out of um, sketch mode. Now, I should be able to move this to fit within the bounds, scale it in a little bit, and like I said, it's not easy, but the work is definitely worth it. Alright, and that's about as close as I'm going to need it. So, we take this, move it to layer 2, so we won't be messing with that no more. And then on this, we're going to texture, meaning we're going to hit textured solid. So here we are, vertices, already got just an idea of our face on our mesh. Now, if we extrude, no, we'll come to this bridge as we get to it. Um, but there is a way that, for some reason, it loses your UVs, but it's not doing it right now. So at this point, I am pretty much just using basic modeling tools to just start defining the head. This is also a good point in which you may want a second 3D view. So we'll be looking at it from the front and from a three-quarter, except we don't want to do it in this view. We want to go back to modeling. Forgot that I even had this. Switch it to orthographic. Switch this one to orthographic. Get rid of this menu. T, T get rid of this and now finally we're ready to be really begin so the knife tool as I showed you on an earlier video the knife tool is just beautiful I'm going to come down here click 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 enter I'm also going to move this over move this over and K, select that vert, connect it here, connect it here, press enter, K, select this vert, select this vert, press enter. And we're just putting micro cuts to just kind of lay the law down as far as 
the shapes of his face. Put a loop cut here, control R. Now none of our loops are connecting anymore because we've broken the quads with these end guns, but by the time we're done, no end gun will remain. And we just begin modeling. So we pull the eye in. And I guess this is a good way that you could also start making like low poly characters, but this one's going to be high poly. If y'all want me to show y'all how to take it low poly, I could. we could easily do that at the end. Especially by the end of this, you'll be able to do it easily. Um, and so this is what we're looking at. Ignore the back of the head. It had to go through to the other side. Alright, next thing is the nose. So let's just put some cuts around here. and we'll press K. K is the button that we're going to be using a lot so I'm just going to no longer tell y'all I'm just going to say knife, knife, cut, knife. Alright. So right now majority of this is just us using our eyes to just make it fit. The real detail doesn't come until later. We'll take a knife, cut here, and you should see a pattern by now. We're cutting around specifically. All right, here's another thing. So we're going to be putting cuts all along the front of the face. No love to the back. So what I like to do is take this and subdivide. And all that does is just make the loop cut stop abruptly before going all the way around. We also ought to do this just mm, about right there. And we'll deal with that later, but that at least will prevent us from adding unnecessary spans to the head. And as you can see, just from these cuts alone, we're starting to really make a little bit of leeway here. However, I feel that this part should come out. And the other pictures will come in handy later for when we're doing editing from various angles. So everything has a use. Let's just select these faces, bring it out, which does not add to it. And from here, we'll cut, cut, enter, add a loop here, that wrong button. We'll also cut here, and now we've established the nostrils somewhat. For now, everything is just being set up now. But the method that I've found to be the easiest is this one, especially whenever it comes to modeling heads. Alright, this is going to span all the way around, and we don't want that, so let's just select these two verts, subdivide. Now we can divide all day. Don't have to worry about going all the way around. Because we're going to control every aspect of this geometry and make this suitable for animation, facial animation, but the end result is to I can't tell you yet. But there is a goal for the end of this. Alright, so here we go. We got our mouth area. First thing I like to do is pull... nope. Let's do it a little differently. Press K. Cut from here to here to here. And now pull this in pull this out and our geometry is looking a complete mess but it will all loop around so pretty at the end just bring that out this part we know probably comes up and then in meanwhile under the chin 
we know that this part comes out. Establishing all these details with as few geometry as possible allows us to really quickly flesh in details that would normally require a lot of edge loops which also require a lot of work to maintain and frankly it's just more work than it's worth. And the model and the method that we're using this time is also a little different than used on the initial model. So the results are definitely going to be a lot different, but for the better, hopefully. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and just add this loop around the nose. Just cut around. And the amount of cuts I know to make is because of the amount of vert sticking out like that and so I could go from here connect this to this enter and at, and using the whole B mesh system can be a little can be a little difficult so it's important to make sure that you your vertice that you're cutting is highlighted because if not you will come into some issues with double verts and uncontinuous loops and stuff like that, but it's all part of the learning process. It happened to me. I'm telling you, I used to hate B mesh. I used to, uh, well, I wouldn't say hate. Hate's a strong word for describing something like this. But I used to think that it was something only for certain people, and that is not adaptable to my workflow, but everyone's workflow needs to adapt to this. Now you see right here we see that there is an additional vert which it was like right here. Whenever this happens you just grab the two, merge. I'm going to choose at last. But now there is a continuous loop going around this entire, well almost the entire the entire nose. We'll cut here, cut here And so here's where we are so far. Time to save as plus. And these files are only kilobytes, so I don't care if there's like 90 of them. Also, like you know, if you ever played Super Nintendo emulation, you you remember saving states. That's what I consider having multiple files as is states. I just go back to it. While I'm just modeling here, I'll tell you a funny story. So I didn't beat Super Mario Brothers 2 until years later um, through emulation but that was like the hardest game ever I remember getting to the end and was like you know this was it this is what I was fighting towards like y'all remember that game having to go through all that BS on the well level and finding the pipes and all of that and the desert level but whatever enough idle talk we'll just talk about the model and all I'm doing is just trying to establish a early shape. Nothing set in stone, everything can still be changed. The other thing is right here, actually press escape. We're going to go ahead and just cut around the eyes. All right. And you see the UV stays intact, so we have a pretty good idea of our texture look at all stages of this whole project. And this is one of the things that I love about the UV modifier, I mean the, yeah, the UV project modifier so much, is in addition to its texture painting uses, it also has immense use when modeling. We almost don't even need the background image behind, but that will play its role later when we abandon the projection and go with just the basic images. Now from here we're gonna K, add a loop cut. Okay, so from here we want to connect to here. Yes. And we're gonna bring it out and start trying to establish the brow line. This is all just speculation. There's no real method to it. We have the pictures so we know what detail we're aiming for. 
So beyond that, you know, it's modeled to your liking. We could make another cartoony character, like am I making an anime head tutorial, but no. We're going to try to make something photorealistic. Right now I'm still debating on whether I should render it in cycles or use the Blender internal, which cycles runs incredibly slow because I'm using ATI and CUDA is not available yet for it. I mean, CUDA will never be available for it. Um, I believe it's because the Cycles is not doing OpenCL yet. So, we may stick with the Blender internal since it's just faster for me. Removing the eyes may not have been the best choice. We'll learn to live with it. And so we're just adding geometry, and this is like, I don't know, I consider it like a micro zone because all my loops never make it to the other loops until it's time. In fact, right here, we go ahead and start adding some roundness to the nose. Just put in another loop here, start bringing this in, bring this in, bring that out, and bring this in. And it's all just general shaping. But as you can see, we're making leeway very quickly. Let's see how much time I got left. I got lots. We're 31 minutes into it. And already you're starting to look at a fine low poly model. Alright, so more tuning on the lips now. And we still haven't went around and made everything quad, so there's lots of tries, but there's also no subsurf. So no subsurf, no problem. You also must forgive me if I'm going out of technique. It's been a minute since I modeled ahead, but I think it's my primary focus of Blender study is making humans because, well, we see them every day and yet all the models I see that people make that are, you know, pre-master pre are always, you know, looking so bad. So this is going to be a tutorial on how to make a damn good model of a head. But enough ranting. Just trying to fill up the recorder time so there's not dead air. Alright. So from here, we'll go ahead and connect the nose to this. We'll connect this vert to this. And just from this one picture, you can see a lot of the curve that the face has, but we will perfect it through sculpting, which in my opinion is the fastest way to make mass vertice changes. We'll K here. We'll K again. But we won't K for the third time because that's racist, but we will put a loop cut. And so we are moving along. Put a loop here. I just love the ability to be able to build my geometry up to this level without having to deal with massive spans, gaping holes, and all the other things that my old technique involved, or not my old technique, but the old technique I was using. Um, in my opinion, I think that modeling has various techniques that are employed by different people, and my goal is to learn each person's technique. Um, if you like, I can show you the person whose technique we're modeling with today. Um, but I have to look up his video, but it was, it was a Japanese video. Where they're basically just cutting a 
sphere to pieces with a knife and turned it into something that I still can't even recreate yet but the technique however was learned and so here we go we're making a loop around the eyes so we're starting to set up some of our long-term geometry or at least laying out the patterns that we're going to be modifying all throughout the modeling so where to go next we'll K cut and another thing is dissolving we'll go over that when I do it again we'll connect it here edges don't mean anything we can dissolve them and make them at will of course and we'll use K bring those two together stretch this out start working around the circle of the eye this one however is going to need to go up here and enter so with these cuts inserted I should be able to loop completely around however I do think that there's a try here that it's actually going through which is another strange thing well, we don't want tries at all especially tries that trick us into thinking that's looping because well for some reason it is if you remember in the old builds triangles were still bad but I've been trained to have an all quad workflow in fact I can't even model what tries if I want to unless it's just you know the area behind the ear that you just don't care about add a loop cut here K enter alright and so now we have this one which now we're just cleaning up now look at this part right here I press control R I can put loops everywhere but if I just click in here it adds a vert sometimes you don't even notice that kind of shit but it will definitely frustrate you it's secret verts and that is one of the things that BMesh just has a lot of is it'll create these secret verts that will break your loop but it just takes a keen eye you'll be able to notice them in no time we will use K bring it up here press nothing alright we'll try it again we'll go from this vert to this vert press enter also put a loop here go in with a knife K bring it up here press enter alright and we got that however there is still a quad I mean a still so if you press X you now have the option to dissolve delete edge loop works better though nowhere near complete but we're moving along so from here we have a couple of loops that we want so allow me to pretend to be an instructor and explain so whenever you're modeling a face you want particular loops to be in place you want there to be loops around the eyes you want there to be a loop around the nose you want the mouth to be comprised of loops but you also want the nose to connect around the mouth 
and the stuff will just of course go in like this and of course the nose will go up into here where it will be a master loop connecting knees and then finally we'll just fill in these pans and of course build a chinny chin chin so that is kind of the plan as far as the geometry goes and then of course up the head we're going to be trying to set it up to be like this does this look familiar yes it's probably the muscles of the human face but real simplistic uh, but I'm not an anatomy major but oh yeah, I spent a lot of time watching other people's videos just to further my own technique and all these videos are simply just my findings or me trying to showcase improvements or talents or whatever but this is our game plan we press escape to get out of sketch mode set my tablet back over because we don't need it here we'll actually just turn it off because we don't even need it at all save the file TN control up and let's see what we can do to improve what we got here well I want to bring out the nose a little bit that'll lend credibility to the shape I also want to put in the nostrils but that will come after we've established more solid geometry now for the lips this will probably be where I leave off on this video yeah this will probably be where I leave off on this video um, for now but I'll be recording part two after I render this video and then play Modern Warfare 3 so we cut our loop that we want we got nasty tries but how to make this what we want. So, well we want this here um, subdivide with W and subdivide Alt M center we will dissolve this we will merge these three and right now I'm just playing with different combinations because getting the geometry just right sometimes is a little bit difficult but BMesh allows us to have a lot of flexibility whenever it comes to doing these things now instead of before we were pretty much stuck to an all quad workflow and that's what I became very used to and now I have this freedom that I've never understood what it offered or you know but enough glorifying this back to modeling more cuts around the inner perimeters of the lips bring these down like I said, we're not even really using the photo references just yet to hone the form. We're just setting it up. So we got that loop. This loop, however, is a mess. We will actually dissolve, dissolve dissolve look at this we have some horrible shapes in here we need to define but we are definitely getting there and in one video we have made pretty good progress so now from here we're gonna cut cut enter alright and for this one we are going to K cut enter and we'll deal with that later so from here we'll just cut all the way here press enter 
K, cut to here, press enter. Oh yeah, I told you I was going to stop doing that. Can't help it now. Now you're going to have to just endure me talking about the knife the whole time. A person who we're actually modeling would definitely get a hoot out of seeing you guys try to follow my technique and make the model like I was telling him that he might see a bunch of less developed derpy versions of himself over the internet and that might be pretty entertaining but yeah I'll definitely share the reference images so that way y'all can also give this a shot you don't even have to model the same guy like I said the colors and variations can be used for a wide variety of characters and with skin corrections uh, copy and pasting from other photos you could make completely different people which was what I was experimenting and we'll probably be talking about in the future so we're gonna put a cut here and we're gonna press K put a cut here press enter now which vert should we remove well we want it to spin around and go that way so dissolve that Mission accomplished. So, here we go. Now the next thing from here is we probably want to go ahead and just put this loop that spans around the mouth. So it would be here, going up. We'll press K cut here to that vert which will enable us to K cut here and cut here press enter we will K cut from here to here and of course cut from here to here and the result is we have a loop that is on the verge of getting up so we'll dissolve that loop and we'll dissolve that edge just X and dissolve. Dissolving removes it without destroying the faces or something like that. I can't explain what it does but if you mess with it you will understand. I'm counting the edges on the nose so I make sure these all fit and K to here. K from here to here, K from here to here, and let's see, there we go, struck gold, and connect here. So now we have this loop, which we're needing to make desperately. Well, you know, think of it like this. In 40 minutes, we went in, prepared our reference images, built almost the face. I mean, we have tons of work to do, but it's looking more like a face and less like a cube by the minute. And if we look at these, the cheekbones are definitely in, but as you can see, we're only working on the eyes, nose, and the mouth specifically. And that's why the rest of this has that geometry and we will do away with all of that and further perfect it. I'm going to put a loop here just so this can meet with this and I'm also going to put one here so this can meet with this. We will connect this one here make sure that there's no strangeness connect this to here bring this down let's see what are we trying to do here geometric wise I mean geometry wise we could put a cut here 
K connected here. And that will serve well. And let's see what our loops are looking like. So we still need one here. So we can connect this to this. And it's just mainly just making sure that everything in the quads. But this tool, even if you're not adding a loop, it still is useful for checking your loops and just making sure that we have the right systems in place. All right. We'll correct that. I'm just going to connect this here. I might actually delete this edge loop. This one should also go around the mouth. In my opinion, it should. But in that, instead, it's not. So from here, we're going to just leave off. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to save as plus, And I will see you all in part two.